Hello, I'm Leanne, 16 years old, youngest member of our school's fashion club. I was busy preparing for the big event, pasting the crepe paper to the board when someone stepped on it. Hey, watch out! Oops, sorry, said Alex, our club president. Oh, I was actually looking for you. I stared at Alex. She was beautiful. No, she was even beyond beautiful. Very attractive. If I were a boy, I would date her for sure. My heart increased and I got those butterflies in my stomach. I couldn't even stop smiling. What the? I shouted. Alex looked surprised. I just thought you would be hungry, that's all, said Alex. I didn't notice that it was 3 p.m. in the afternoon and I hadn't taken my lunch yet. I could hear the sound of my hungry stomach when suddenly Alex put a hot dog in my face. Here, take your sandwich, Alex said. Hunger makes you a little crazy. Well, thank you, Alex. I appreciate it, I said as I took my first hungry bite to the hot dog while staring at her. I could feel this weird temperature rise inside me as I look on her while she unbuttons her collar and flips her hair side by side. Hot day, isn't it? She told me. Yeah, you said it, I replied as I put my eyes away from her deceiving look. What's going on with me? Well, Leanne, I must congratulate you for being the most diligent club officer our organization has. I guess without you, we'll just be a laughing stock to the other clubs. Thank you so much, she said as she hugged me tightly. I didn't know what to say. I didn't notice that I actually blushed. My goodness. Thanks that she went away after hugging me and didn't see me. There was a music festival that night, and we were so ecstatic with the set event. By around 6 p.m., I started packing up my things and heading with my friends to the school ground to watch the bands play. Little did I know that I would meet my future boyfriend, Robbie, a Yankee and towering with his height of six feet. I thank my parents for their height. My body is not that far from him. Well, he's cute, or may I say he falls in the category of handsome guy type, but he's actually very timid. Yes, he's the boy next door type also, but it is unnoticed because he keeps on bowing his head most of the time, trying to appear smaller despite his bulky body. The night went lovely, not just because of the cool music, but because Robbie is actually an awesome guy. If only people were able to see his inner being, they would be totally amazed. I wonder how a spontaneous and out-of-the-box girl like me will actually compliment a meek guy. That's for our case, as the law of physics say, opposite poles attract. The memories of the lovely night stayed with me as I neared my home, but stopped as I heard yelling coming from inside. I slowly opened the door so as not to make any noise. I saw how hysterical my father was as my mother tried to explain everything. My father went upstairs, and when he went down, he had his things with him. The next thing I saw was my mother crying at the dining table, looking by the dining window, watching. I stood silently, trying to digest what I just saw. My mother mother saw me and walked towards me. Overwhelmed, I ran upstairs and headed to my room. I locked the door and stuck the pillow by my head. I laid there silently, waiting for my tears to dry. My mother knocked on the door, but I didn't open it. Then there was a magic moment. I remembered the nice guy, Robbie. I got up and took the phone by the table beside my bed. I dialed the number he gave me. I heard his cool voice and told him that I wanted to meet him in a coffee shop downtown. He said yes, but would be late for a couple of hours since his sister was coming home from out of town, and he had to clean up the mess in their apartment. I was about to get out of my room when I heard two women talking to each other. The one was my mother, while the other one, I guess, was a visitor. I went downstairs and went to the living room to tell my mother that I would be out for a while that night. To my surprise, I saw my mother and a woman hugging themselves like a couple. What's the meaning of this? I asked innocently. Let me explain, honey, my mother told me as she got up from the couch and tried to reach her hands to me. No, mom, please. I'm still in shock with dad's abandonment, and yet here you are. Are my eyes saying the truth this moment? What's this, mom? Then I started crying, confused in front of my mom. I'm sorry, dear. Just let me explain. She walked toward me, but I managed to run outside. I didn't understand at that moment what I just went through with my family. I wanted to escape and go to a very faraway land, but I couldn't. What should I do? I remembered then that I should go meet Robbie in the coffee shop, but he was still in their apartment. I passed by the park and decided to stay there for a couple of hours. I walked inside the park like it was new to me. Then at the time I saw its beauty, the tranquility of the lake's water smelled the fresh breeze of the air, heard the hustling of the tree leaves, and heard from a distance the voice of chatting people who also pay a visit in the park. I was still walking and looking up at the moon when someone bumped into me. I'm sorry, I'm just texting my brother. I didn't see you coming, said a beautiful lady with a backpack in her front. No, it's fine. I'm not hurt, actually. Just refreshing myself. 
you know, family problems, <laughs> I said as I pretentiously laughed. I guess she sensed me pretending to be fine. Wanna go eat? I bet you're hungry <laughs> and crying. My treat? She said as she held me by the hand and we went to a mini food stall inside the park. How come she knew that I cried? Well, maybe she was just guessing. I ignored it. We had a talk and, well, I think she's a nice and trustworthy lady, so I opened up my problem to her. Your mother is into ladies? She asked. I don't know exactly if she's a lesbian or bisexual. All I know is that she has an affair with a woman, I said as I bowed my head and took a deep sigh. It's nothing unusual. We're humans and we're prone to attraction. Give your mother a chance to explain. Maybe she's just confused. Give her time and your father too. She smiled and tapped my shoulders. She gave me a hug. I let the warmth wrap around me, growing relaxed as bliss filled me. Feeling her against me, my body started to heat up. That man stole my wallet! shouted an old lady as she pointed out a man running away from her. Seeing the man running from us, my newfound friend calmly put her foot along the man's way that caused him to stumble. The next thing, the wallet flew up in the air and landed in my hands. What? I saw the man as he gave me a frightening stare. Give me the wallet and nobody gets hurt, he said as he brought out a Swiss knife and pointed it at me. My grip only tightened down the wallet. I closed my eyes and heard a couple of grunts. It's okay now. I saw the man with his face pressed into the table, an arm bent behind his back by my new lady friend, the knife neatly placed beside her cup of coffee. The old lady came with two policemen. I handed the wallet to the old lady and she thanked me and my newfound friend. That was so cool. Where did you learn that? I asked her as I stood up and walked with her away from the stall where we ate. I had to learn. My brother and I are already orphans, and because I'm the older child, I promised that I would be strong, especially since I have a brother who is so meek, she said as she put her backpack in front of her again. Then her phone rang. Oops, I'm sorry, I have to go. By the way, I'm Rhea. Nice to meet you. And she ran away. I wasn't able to ask for her number. I watched her go. Then it dawned on me. Oh no, I forgot Robbie. I checked my cell phone and it's 11 p.m. The coffee shop is operating 24 hours, but it's embarrassing for Robbie to wait for me for so long. I rushed to the coffee shop and saw him sitting at the table near the door. You're here, Robbie said, but later on I saw the questioning in his face. Did you cry? He asked. Are you kidding? Why would I cry? I tried to laugh but failed. He went to the cashier's area and got something from the cashier. Then he came back and handed me something. A mirror. Why? Then I knew, upon looking at my reflection, that my eyeliner was washed by my tears, and I looked like some miserable punk gal. I was still looking at my face when Robbie grabbed me by the hand and pulled me outside the coffee shop. Hey, Robbie, wait, where are we going? I told him, but he didn't even pay me a look, but looked straight forward to where he was taking me. We then arrived at the city park. There were a few people in the park since it was 12 midnight, I guess. Why did you bring me here? I asked while massaging my hands that he grabbed and dragged tightly a while ago. Well, when I was a kid, I was actually a crybaby. I remember when I was 10 years old that whenever my sister and I had a petty fight before going to sleep, my mother would take me to this park and we would sit together on that bench. As he pointed to the bench beside the park's man-made lake, then as usual, he bowed his head again. So, where's your mom? I asked directly. She's gone, he said, then looked up at the moon. What do you mean gone? Did she just leave you for another man? I asked him with surprise. No, she died of pneumonia. She got the illness from our visits here in the park every night. She used to put her hat on my little head so I wouldn't feel the cold night breeze. Unfortunately, she suffered because of her care and love for me every night. He said, and this time started to walk modestly toward the bench that he pointed to a while ago. Where's your father? I then added to my series of questions. He died when I was born. Died of tuberculosis. Sad old fate. He then gave a deep sigh. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. I apologized to him. No, it's fine. It's my fault. I should have told you my story earlier. Then he approached me as we sat on the bench. When my mother died, I promised myself to bring the girl that would make my heart feel the genuine love my mother gave to me when I was a kid, he said and laughed a little. I smiled and looked at him. You're making a joke on that last part, I said giggling. No, I'm serious, he said, and he smiled a little. His dimple on his left and right cheek surfaced, and I couldn't help but melt away as I stared at his handsome face. It's quite late. I guess we better go home. Your sister might be looking for you, I asked while wiping my sweat from my forehead on a cold summer night. He laughed gently, and this made my body temperature rise more. He's so cute. I felt so lucky and blessed to have a guy like him by my side. He accompanied me to our house. The lights were off. My mother might be sleeping at this time. 
I said goodbye to him, and as I waited for him to say his goodbye, he went near to me and kissed me on the forehead. Good night, sweet lady. I'll make the best photos for your fashion show next week. Break a leg, he said with a slight smile. What do you mean? You're our club photographer? I shouted to him as I saw him walking backwards away from me. He waved his hands to me and said good night. It was such a memorable night. I felt like a queen who finally found her king, but I realized there was no us yet. We were just friends. What if he didn't really like me? What if he would meet someone in school that was just more attractive than a girl like me? Well, I went inside and slept in my room immediately. On the fourth day of the music fest, a bossy and aggressive guy suddenly approached me and asked me out. Well, I was surprised with him, but what surprised me more was Robbie's reaction, who was beside me at that time. He held my hand and with a firm facial expression said to the guy, She's my girlfriend. Back off. I pulled at his sleeve, hinting him to get away, but he wouldn't budge. I expected the other guy to start a fight, but he quietly stepped back, raising his palm. Still in shock with the situation, I decided to play along because no other guys had ever asked me out in my entire teenage life. And besides, it would make the work we were doing easier. My goodness, the fashion week passed and it was totally a smash. There was a lot of great feedback from the audience and as a way to celebrate, the fashion design club members decided to celebrate in the coffee shop where Robbie and I usually spend our time together. The group and I headed to the coffee shop. Robbie told me that his sister was already there and he told me that his sister was excited to meet me. Robbie didn't have a picture of me, so I guessed he described me since I don't like posting my face in any of the social media accounts. Upon entering the coffee shop, Robbie excitedly held me by the hand and pulled me to the cashier's area. There was a lady there, but I could only see her back since she was talking to the crew in the kitchen. Hey sis, meet Leanne, he said. The woman turned and faced us. To my surprise, it was Rhea. It's you. We meet again, she said, and then she hugged me tightly. You know each other? Robbie said. Yes, she's the girl I told you I met in the park. I told you she was cute, especially with the washed away eyeliner in her eyes. And then she laughed modestly. Then I realized why she didn't tell me about my eyeliner. She found me cute with that look. I just laughed with that realization. His sister then assisted us in our group for our orders. I'm still surprised with what happened. Because of Rhea's upbeat attitude and cheerful face, the way she smiled and winked at me had me sighing. I felt my cheeks heat up as I realized I'm crushing on my boyfriend's sister. This can't be happening. I can't be rowing my boat in the middle of two rivers. Robbie and I kept on going to the coffee shop, where we were always welcomed by Rhea's infectious smile. Rhea even looked like a 16-year-old girl because she always smiles compared to her brother Robbie, who always shows his serious face most of the time. Then one afternoon, after spending the usual day in the coffee shop with Robbie, I reached home and braced myself for the silence. I was surprised to see my father and mother eating happily in our dining area. Father's back. Hi, Dad. Hi, Mom. I greeted them with a poker face. Come over here, honey. I know you haven't had your dinner yet. Come spend some time with us, said my mother with a happy face. I went to the dining area in complete silence. Dad, what happened? I asked my dad. Well, honey, I realized that I really love your mother. Loving a person truly means being ready to accept who she is, just like your mother. It's also forgiveness, honey. The best thing you can give to the person you care for, aside from love and acceptance, is forgiveness, my father said as he got the hand of my mother and and kissed it. So, where's the woman I saw the other night? I asked my mother. She went away with a new woman. She left me for good, she said, and smiled a little. I think this was a sign for me to unload my problems to my parents. They would give me good advice. Mom, Dad, I have something to tell you. I hope this will not make you angry, as I spoke in a low voice. What is it, honey? said my mother with a curious face. I'm actually attracted to my guy's sister, I said, and then covered my face with my two hands. My parents looked at each other in a poker face and then smiled. They both looked at me. My mother put her finger in my chest and said, My dear, just follow the real desire of your heart. We may be attracted to the physical appearance of a person, but a person's heart is what really tugs lovers together. In those words my mother had spoken to me, I had to finally face my adversity. Tomorrow, I'll ask Robbie's help to get closer to Rhea. I want to get closer to his sister. Robbie might just be those same guys out there who are just playing with girls, but is he? Still, I managed to be firm. The next morning, I told Robbie that I wanted to meet him in the coffee coffee shop around 4 p.m. in the afternoon, which was two hours from the start of his sister's shift. Robbie told me that he also wanted to tell me something. Then we met at the coffee shop at 4 p.m. We sat facing each other. It was actually awkward silence.
silence between the two of us. I could hear the chatting of the people on the table near us. We started speaking, but fell silent again and again. Okay, you go, I said. No, you first, he said. I smiled and took a deep breath. Okay, at the count of three, we'll say what we want to say to each other, I told him while feeling uncomfortable. Robbie agreed, and at the count of three, I said with a strong feeling, I like your sister, while Robbie said to me, I like you. More awkward silence followed. I felt embarrassed with what happened and rushed away. Robbie actually followed me. When I saw Robbie behind me running, I faced him and shouted, Leave me alone! Give me some time to think, Robbie! I got angry and stomped away. He didn't follow me anymore. A few months passed after what happened. It was Valentine's Day and we were sitting in the park by each other's side. He had called me here. One meeting he asked for, just one. With a heavy heart, I agreed. We sat there in silence, but I couldn't look at him. He then handed me from behind his back a box of chocolates and a bouquet of flowers. I couldn't accept it after all that happened. He hushed me and said it's his sister's favorite. I was surprised with what I heard. I stared at him in curiosity, confused with his words and waiting for his next words. If we're going to do this, we're going to make it right, Leanne.